here with you to present to you the Commission proposal for Artificial Intelligence Act. Um, my name is Jordanka Ivanova and I'm working in the European Commission and I'm one of the persons who have been following this key legislation, um, which is now um, in the key stages of uh, before adoption. Um, and um, it is first of all very important to start to say that uh, artificial intelligence is a key priority for the European Union. Um, at the next slide, you will see that um, over the years, um, the Commission, uh, together with the Member States, have developed a number of important documents as we really want to encourage and create the conditions for the development of these key technologies uh, for European companies, public authorities, uh, citizens to rape all the benefits that AI can bring to us. Uh, and at the same time, um, also make sure that um, uh, AI develops in, in line with our values and it's also safe. So we have developed uh, this uh, human-centric approach to artificial intelligence that we also want to build in European Union, but also promote uh, globally. And some of these key documents um, since 2018 have been strategies that we have developed in Europe on artificial intelligence guidelines for trustworthy artificial intelligence by the high-level expert group coordinated plans with key actions um, that help companies, public authorities uh, also to design and develop these technologies and promote the uptake. Also the white paper on artificial intelligence where we launched a broad public consultation uh, asking for um, everyone's views uh, how to regulate and also to enable the development of AI in the EU. And we received uh, more than 1,200 um, replies from all over Europe. And all this helped us um, come with the AI package from April 2021 which um, um, actually proposes the key elements of our ecosystem of excellence um, that aims to make Europe a key leader in AI. Um, at the next slide, you will see with the coordinated plan on AI and the review, as well as the first legal proposal for an artificial intelligence uh, act, which is first of its kind uh, globally and aims for first time to regulate uh, this uh, fast developing technology comprehensively. Um, with the objectives, as you will see at the next slide, um, um, now we are with the key stages of the legislative process um, after the Commission proposed this in 2021. Now the Parliament and the Council uh, are negotiating together with the Commission and our objective is to adopt the legislation um, by the end uh, of this year. So at the next slide you will see some very brief introduction with the key principles and objectives of this regulation. Um, it is a product safety legislation. We aim to create harmonized rules that would apply in all EU 27 member states, how AI should be designed, developed and used. And our legislation is complementary and without prejudice to already existing legislation like data protection or sectoral specific legislation in the financial sector or digital services and other areas. The key objective is to create a single market for trustworthy artificial intelligence applications that are human-centric um, and that promote the uptake and the development of the technology, while at the same time also address risks to health, safety and fundamental rights in certain applications that we consider um, are um, need to be further regulated. So the scope is horizontal, it covers both public and private sector, but it also takes into account the specificity also of different sectors and um, use cases, as I'm going to, to present to you in the next slide. 
But also just before going to that, it's important to emphasize that the key objective of this regulation is to build trust um, both in users but also in citizens uh, when these technologies are available in the European Union and also to provide legal certainty to both individuals and companies how they can develop and use them responsibly. Another important um, element is that with these new rules, we are, want to create a level playing field between European and non-European providers of those systems, because as software solutions, they are, uh, have often cross-border applications and they can be provided also by providers outside the EU. So we want to make sure that when they are um, given to um, European businesses, uh, those systems have been also properly checked and subjected to uh, to, to certain minimum uh, requirements. So, so then uh, also European companies can rely on them. And um, uh, also the proposal is aimed to be future-proof because we know that this is a fast developing technology. Uh, many of the rules are designed uh, in a flexible manner. Uh, and our objective is also to remain innovation friendly, not to really um, intervene be beyond what's strictly necessary at this stage in this fast developing technology. And the key principle to do that is, as you are going to see on the next slide, to follow a risk-based approach. Um, as uh, we don't think that AI technologies are, are dangerous um, as such, or um, we should not forget that they are already regulated. And we think that the specific risks really arise in specific context and certain type of, of uses. So that's why in this risk pyramid, um, we have um, followed a risk approach where we consider that many of the existing applications, they are already subjected to existing legislation and that uh, already minimizes sufficiently the risks to fundamental rights, health and safety. They don't need to be subjected to additional requirements, but providers of those systems are encouraged also to adhere to voluntary codes of conduct um, and ethical guidelines um, that are now also good practice for many companies. Um, however, uh, when we go up to the pyramid in the yellow uh, field, we do think that there are certain applications that need to be subjected to uh, mandatory transparency obligations. Um, in particular, people should know when they are interacting with AI systems or when they are exposed to deep fakes or emotion uh, bio or biometric categorization systems to avoid the risk of manipulation and deceptions and to make sure that we as citizens, um, uh, we also preserve our autonomy and we can take informed uh, actions when we are more and more exposed to these uh, systems. On the next category, we see the orange layer, um, which is actually the core of the AI regulation, because for these high-risk AI systems that we call them, as they have um, quite important implications uh, for human and fundamental rights of people with very significant consequences if they are not properly functioning, we propose to create specific requirements and compliance procedures before those systems can be put um, on the European market. And on the next slide, uh, you will see um, that we have tried in our legal proposal to give maximum legal certainty what would be these high-risk uh, AI systems? On one hand, we could have AI systems that are embedded already in regulated products like medical devices, machinery, robots, where AI could be a safety uh, function of those systems already for applications that are designated by the, the sectoral legislation as high-risk. So this is the first main category. And then we also have a new category of the so-called standalone AI systems that are mainly provided as software solutions and where we do think that there are important fundamental rights uh, implications. Um, uh, and we have tried to designate uh, use cases in these um, eight broad areas, including biometric, critical infrastructure, education, employment, 
um, essential public and private services, law enforcement, migration, and administration of justice and democratic processes. It's important to say that it's not any AI system within those broad areas that would be high risk, only very specific use cases that the Commission has proposed to list. And just to give you one example, in the area of finance, although we know that there are plenty of uh, already applications uh, that where AI is used for various purposes, we have proposed that only one use case is um, classified as high risk, and this is the credit worthiness assessment and credit scoring of natural persons and, and consumers. Now, uh, of course, the, this list is subject to discussion. We've also proposed to amend it over time through delegated acts so we can add more use cases based on experience, new risks. And now, um, since the proposal, the Council and the Parliament have also proposed uh, certain changes in the financial sector, specifically also to include uh, AI systems uh, used for individual risk assessment, pricing, specifically in health and life uh, insurance. They both converge on this idea. Um, but at the same time, they have also both proposed to have an additional risk filter that would help to... Um, even if certain use case could be one uh, listed under uh, the annexes, uh, the providers uh, could still have the opportunity to demonstrate under certain conditions that uh, their system would not be causing significant uh, risks to fundamental rights, health and safety and would not be subjected to the requirements. On the next slide, um, just to present you very briefly, what are these main requirements? They are based very um, much on standard good practices, uh, how to design and develop ethical and responsible AI. So they include uh, for obligation to have risk management, to identify, mitigate risk, train the system with good quality data to avoid discrimination bias, ensure documentation, logs to enable traceability on Ability, have also transparency so that then users understand how the system functions and they have also enough information about limitation, capabilities of the system. Ensure also human oversight so that users are always capable to exercise control over the system, both through measures that are integrated in the design and also implemented by the user afterwards. And finally, to ensure robustness, accuracy, and cyber security, which are very important to make sure that these systems really do what they promise. At the next slide, um, um, we also see on the top of the pyramid certain very limited prohibited practices where we think that um, uh, AI can be very harmful and should not be at all used in the European Union. So this includes, for example, subliminal manipulation uh, resulting in physical or psychological harm, general purpose social scoring by public authorities, exploitation of vulnerabilities of, uh, of special groups like children or disabled people that would also result in physical or psychological harm, or real-time remote biometric identity identification for law enforcement purposes with certain exceptions. So these limited practices are, of course, without prejudice to any other bans uh, or um, prohibitions that exist under applicable legislation, regardless whether AI is used or not. So they are complementary to that. On the next slide, um, I just want to mention that there are ongoing discussions. So the original commission proposal is still subject to changes. Parliament and Council agree very much uh, with the foundations, the risk-based approach and the overall architecture, but they have all proposed certain changes. For example, the Parliament to extend the prohibitions in certain use cases, also to have a fundamental rights impact assessment is obligation for the user, so it's also further in the value chain, more contextual dependent uh, assessment of the risk to have redress rights and environmental concerns. While the council, on the other hand, um, wants to keep the risk uh, high risk uh, very limited, um, want to more uh, take care of the innovation aspect, support regulatory sandboxes to help companies comply or taste in a safe environment and they're 
take care of the law enforcement uh, needs uh, of the authorities with some special exceptions. For both of them, governance and enforcement are very important, as well as the uh, subject of general purpose AI systems or foundation models with systems like ChatGPT um, uh, and, and other image generators that have thrown the, the world uh, into, uh, into a lot of recent developments and changed a lot, showed new risks. So both of the co-legislators uh, are addressing this and reflect on specific additional rules uh, for those. Um, so now there is a lot of discussion also in the international context uh, how those systems uh, should be uh, regulated so um, risks are mitigated um, well in advance. And at the next slide, um, uh, to finalize, uh, as I said, uh, now the objective politically is really to finalize and adopt this legislation by the end of this year because there are there are a lot of uh, um, imminent risks uh, that we have seen with AI and also at international level. A lot of discussions are taking place at UN, Council of Europe, uh, G7 and other levels where we see the need, a global need for a um, uh, regulatory framework where European wants to shape and contribute. And at the same time, we are also working to uh, prepare the future implementation of, of the AI Act, for example, to develop harmonized standards to support companies to implement um, the regulation and also to launch an AI pact for companies who are in interested to get prepared in apply the legislation even before the official um, legal deadline, especially for high risk years after the, the Act is adopted. So with this, I will finish and I hope we can, uh, that was useful for you and we can stay in touch uh, also for the future implementation or if some of the companies are interested uh, to, to join this uh, AI pack. Thank you very much.